So I put on the screen the results of the exam. I'm going to be handing them back in a, in a minute. Um, oh, this doesn't fit the whole. Wait, what's going on here? It's not all. It's not all there. There we go. That's better. Um, so I, I think the open response is the more like important thing. That's the one that really is determining how much you're understanding and then there's you know some adjustment based on the multiple choice. Um, I don't know. This is a pretty typical distribution for my classes. So, you know, the, like a straight A is about 10% of the class typically and most people are in the B and C range. But then that, that's at this point, I like have taught this class enough times that um, I could. I, I don't need the scale in order to generate. Like I don't need to see all of it to to know what an A is, what a B is, and what a C is. But this confirms what I normally say. Um, but well, when we so I sent you guys the the answers for the open response ones. Um, you should go over them like. Try your best to understand, you know, and then we just like ask questions either online or, um, you know, here, and we can go over problems. Um, all of this, like, if if you you know, if you're in the A category, you still have to demonstrate your understanding on the final to get an A in the class, and you have to have a great project. If you're in the B or C category, it's the same story. If you're if you're below B or C, you can still succeed. You can do well in the final. And then I may have another announcement on, on Wednesday about like additional things that will help people who are in the below a C. Yeah, Giuseppe. So you were saying something about a final standing game for one of your midterms or something? Yeah. Yeah. So if you if you're so let me go let me go to the, the greeting rubric just to make sure I, I don't say anything that isn't true. Actually it's here. Okay, so the final exam is worth more than the two. So the final exam is going to be comprehensive. So if you do well on the final, what that means to me, and let's say you did well, you do well on the final, and you did less well on the mid-semester exams. That to me means you got it. So I'm happy to take whatever grade you get for the final and take the weight of that and replace it with the mid the mid-semester exam marks. See what I mean? So if you've got like C's on the mid-semester exam and you get a B on the final, then you've got a B for those 50 points, right? And I won't, if you do worse on the final than the mid-semester exams, I, I won't like penalize you, then it'll just like, okay. But uh, you, so you can only help yourself. Yeah, does that answer the question? So pretty much I'm gonna take a max function of whatever the sum of the two mid-semester exams is and compare it to the grade on the final. If the final's better, then it will re re replace. 
I'd, you know, what I'd really like to do is do it on a per concept basis, but I don't have the time to do that. But, yeah. um, okay, so let's um, let me just quickly show what we're doing today, and uh, and then we'll uh, first thing I do is hand out the exams. So we're gonna hand back the exams. Um, I want to. I'm going to announce a guest lecture for Wednesday of next week. I'm working on one for Friday. Um, we're going to start doing the stream stuff, so you guys will have seen that this was posted over the weekend. Um, I wanted to make a comment about PS7B, like an error that a lot of people are making, and then we're going to jump into the new stuff. So, any any questions? Things we want to put on that queue before we start handing back exams. Okay, so let's see. <coughs> All right, so we're going to. Is it, are we the last name now? Okay, let's take anybody whose last name starts with A, B, or C. Come to the front. Thank you. 
last week of new material and I, I, I recognize that it's stress to do new material and do your project so thank you for doing that. Um, so we're, we're going to be doing the stream stuff in a, in a minute we'll start. Um, that prom set to do on Sunday. It, I had to split it into two parts because autograder was annoying but it's one problem set. Um, so the following week after this week Monday's a holiday so that's good so we can all like work. Um, and then there's two more days of meeting here, Wednesday and Friday. So I have um, a colleague lined up for Wednesday. He's a um, professor of computer science at Wellesley College. Um, he's a programming languages researcher, um, really smart guy. And um, he's going to be talking to us about the implementation of MIT App Inventor, which is a blocks-based programming language for Android. And underneath the hood, it runs a scheme interpreter. Um, and his name is, is Franklin Turback, and he's, he's contributed major parts of the uh, design of App Inventor. Um, so he's going to give us like a show and tell of how it's built. And I'm lining, I'm, I'm, I have a, a, re, a contact out for Friday. We'll see. I haven't confirmed that yet. Um, so that's the next week. Um, okay, I already mentioned PSA and B. Oh, so I, the last thing on the screen, I want to make a comment about, so a bunch of people did more work for the MetaCircular Evaluator implementing four. Most people who did it, the way that you did it was you sort of grabbed hold of the interpretation process and you built a recursion in the underlying scheme that performed a loop. And so you... Like you, whereas what I asked, what the problem statement is, is to like create a function that gets carried out on the, the interpreted scheme that itself is recursive. And very few people did that. So I don't know. I, I'll, have to, I'll have to show you the two different ways of doing it. Um, but anyway, I'm taking off 50%. If, and there was one person, I think it was Jake. I think Jake, you, you, like, you, he did a ton of work but like doing it the wrong way and it was really painful to see like because it was like elaborate and complicated and when you see the answer you'll be like oh why didn't yeah. but it's anyway um, I want you to, I want you guys to like understand it so we'll you know the, the homeworks aren't really worth a, a lot towards your grade anyway so it's more that I'm just correcting them to show what's right and wrong than I'm trying to penalize people um, all right we'll talk about that again all right so starting streams, and I want to start out by showing a comic strip. So I, you know, Wally is sort of loathsome, but sometimes he's right. Um, so he's avoiding work because, well, because why do work when, you know, when you know it's just going to get thrown away, probably, right? 
or basically his point is don't do work at all. But anyway, he's got, he's got a good cover story why not do work. Um, with streams, the reason to, to be lazy is not because the work will get thrown away, so it's not that. But why do the work until somebody actually needs it? That's the whole idea of lazy evaluation, is you can accept a request to do work, and then just, then what you do is you, you, you give it back, you're like, yup, got that, and you give somebody back a promise to do the work later when they actually want it. And you've wrapped up in the promise everything you need to do to actually do the work. So all you had to do at the moment when you received the request is just like tie it up with a bow and say, yeah, I got that, come back to me when you actually want me to do it. Um, and it's a really powerful abstraction. It's a way of, you're writing the code as if you were going to do the work, and then nothing actually happens until it's needed. So that's the, that's the essential idea of streams. Um, so that's the, the, the basic foundation. Um, streams are actually quite like a list. So if we look at, if we look at the, um, I'm going to hide this. If we look at the, the basic parts of, of a stream, it's just like a list. There's a cons operation that takes a, a car and a cutter portion, um, and it returns a, um, a con cell, a special one that's the stream cons. Um, the way it will work is when you, when you cons two things together, the first one is an actual thing. The second one does not get evaluated and it gets wrapped with a promise. So the cons pair that comes back has a thing in the car that's an actual like value. The thing in the cutter is this promise object. And we'll see that's really just a lambda. It's not, it's not complicated based on what we already know how to do. It's, it's often called a promise. There's actually, there's another word for it that you will see in the literature. It's also called a thunk. That's an actual word. And programming languages that is this um, delayed evaluation object. Um, when you're building up a list, you have to have an empty list at the end. So there's an object that's called the empty stream. That can I have a quote. I think it has a quote in front. No, it does not have a quote in front of it. It's a, a it's just a, a symbol that's bound in the environment. It's actually bound to nil, so it is in fact empty list. But conceptually, it's empty stream. Um, and then you can unpack those things with stream car and stream cutter. The, the thing that they do is they force the promise. So when you take the stream car of um, an object, if, if it hasn't been, so when you cache in the promise, it's called forcing. Um, and so then the computation is actually done. But the clever part is it's only done for that, like uh, it's only, only one thing is done and then a new, cutter is produced that's a, a promise for the next piece of the computation. Um, so you're only actually, again, you're only doing the work when somebody wants it. That could be printing it out or could be using it in some computation. Um, so a lot of what we're going to understand is how this actually, um, how, how it unfolds dynamically. Because um, you, have, you, have you have to have a pretty strong model of this in order to like, make it work. Um, so some of the things we're going to build, these are things that we're going to build. So for example, I'll do these one at a time. So stream ref, that will walk down a stream and get the nth item. So it basically walks down the stream forcing promises to get the one that you asked for. Um, this is going to be a zero indexed list. So zero is the first one. Stream map, that will take a stream and transform it into another stream where each item in the original stream has been transformed by the mapping procedure. Um, when you first call this, it's not like stream map. It doesn't go walk down the whole stream. It just does the, the first item until somebody starts to want the nth item in the, the, the mapped stream. Then the recursion unfolds and the computations actually happen. Stream filter, so these are like right analogous to like map and filter. So this one builds up a new stream with items that, that pass the predicate function. Um, you can add two streams, so basically each 
parallel item, if you imagine the two streams like laid out horizontally, the first two items get added together to be the first item of the new stream, and so on. And you could multiply streams. Um, display stream is a utility function that the book um, uh, presents that that actually goes through and forces the entire stream. It like recursively goes through, prints out the the car, and um, and then recurses on the cutter until it reaches the end of the stream. Um, one of the things we're going to be able to do is make infinite streams, streams that never end. So if you were to call display stream on that, it would just go off and print forever until you interrupt it or something happens. Um, any questions before I continue? I want to like start writing some code to show you what it looks like when they're running. Okay. I'm going to hand this out in a minute so we can actually do stuff. But first, I want to write a few functions. Um, so this is the starter code that you're going to get. Um, I'm going to ignore the implementation details for a minute. I want to go to the bottom and start writing code. Oh, by the way, we're back in racket land. I should put this at the top. We don't, we're not in R5RS anymore. OK. So I'm going to get the end of the buffer and start writing some code. So before I write the stream code, I want to remind us of some code we wrote probably the second week of the semester. Um, we were writing code like enumerate interval from a starting point to an ending point. And this is going to build a list of integers from start to end. So this is going way back. And the way we're going to do that is we're, we're going to say if if um, start is greater than end, then we're done, and we say empty list. Otherwise, we cons together start with a recursive call to generate the rest of the list. And we increment start, so that the next the recursion starts one down. So now we can make lists of integers. This is like the range function that like was a built-in in Haskell. Remember in Haskell you could take like three to ten and it would build that list. This is a function that does the equivalent thing in scheme. So we can say enumerate interval. So this is just a list from three to ten. Okay. So remember how this worked? It um, it builds up the like the recursion is all these delayed, well, that's, I shouldn't use that word, they're pending. Like, nothing happens until the recursion fully unwinds and enumerate interval is called with 11. Start has got incremented up to 11. End is still 10. And, oh, I forgot to turn off my, I thought I turned off my messages. Hold on a second. Let me just turn this off. Sorry, like I totally did this. It just didn't happen. Um, this recursion was like cons three to cons four to cons five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then start was eleven, end was ten, and the recursion returned empty list, and we got ten cons ten to empty list, and that became a list with ten. And then that returned cons 9 to that thing. And so list 9, 10. And came all the way back, and we see this on the screen. Right? That's what actually happened. OK. So we generated that whole list. If we wanted to do this, like, and we wanted to have an interval from 3 to 10,000, like, OK, the, the, we got that big list. So the whole list gets generated. Now, with streams, here's the equivalent thing. I'm going to abbreviate this. This would be stream enumerate interval from start to end. It, this is going to be almost the same, except we're using streams. So if start is greater than end, then what do I put here? Oh, I haven't handed out the thing.
Okay, what do I put there? The empty stream. So it's going to be like the empty list object, but whatever, we're going to play nice. Otherwise, we do stream cons start, and then the cutter is the recursion. So stream enumerate interval, and we add one to start, and end. OK, so now let's make our list from 3 to 10. And OK, before I do it, now remember what stream cons is going to do. It's going to cons together start, which is a concrete value, so that'll be a number, with this thing. Now, stream cons is a special form. It's, it, remember, normal and special. Normal is evaluate all the parameters and then apply the procedure to them. We're not doing that. We're doing special. So the special case here is evaluate this one, do not evaluate that. Take that expression and hand it off to the promise maker. And so the promise maker says, I see that code and I promise to do it when you ask me to. And here's an object that's a promise object. So make it into a promise, make it into a thunk. The thing that actually gets cons up, it is still using the underlying cons, is if we go from 3 to 10, 3 gets cons with, um, with a promise to do that, and the environment's included too. So when we go to force the promise, we've got the closure where we know what start is, so we can add one to it, and end will be there too. So the promise object includes the environment frame where start and end have values, but we haven't evaluated it yet. So here's what it looks like if we just make this stream. Stream enumerate interval from 3 to 10. Oh, isn't it going to display it? OK, fine. Uh, it's a stream object. Yay. Let me call it foo so we can play with it. I'm going to make another one. All right, foo is that stream. OK, what's the car of foo? Or the stream car of foo? It's three, yeah. What did I do wrong? No, foo is, it's an object. Stream car. Why is that not working? Yeah, stream car. That should totally work. I was playing with this code for hours yesterday, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, and I'm surprised that foo is not printing out. All right, let's do display stream of foo. Something weird going on. Like I think I don't have the right. Yeah, stream of car ultimately is just car, right? So it's not surprising that car gives the same error, and you can see there that empty stream is is empty list. Yes. Let me open up, I think, let me open up the starter code that we would be using in the problem set. And we'll put, there might be something different here that, this, also, this worked. Let me um, copy the, the function I wrote into this. at the top. Do 
put something wrong, something very simple that's wrong. This is the problem set, so there's no problem to show it to you. in R5RS. No, but we're, we're in Rocket, right? <clears throat> you guys have this open. Most of the time you guys have laptops. Somebody can help me out. Doug, have you figured out yet? So you're saying, yeah, you're saying, Brian, the things are built. So, like, just comment these out. Like that? So stream car needs to be defined because it's using. Uh, you have to require brackets. Is that stream cons? Yeah. Stream cons stream. Oh, okay. I think that's it because I always make that error. Con stream. Yes. But then why did stream cons work? <laughs> Because so this, this is probably what Brian's pointing at. There's some built-in stuff. So I'm intersecting the stuff from the book with what's built into Rocket. OK. There we go. We're going to use cons stream. Right. So now we're going to make that stream from 3 to 10. Sorry? No, it's, everything's happy now. Um, so there is this like built-in stuff that I wasn't aware of that we were accidentally using. So we're not going to use the built-in stuff. We're going to use constream. So in the handout I'm going to give, you're going to change it, because I have it backwards. Um, OK, so here we go. So now everything's working the way I anticipated. So when we constream 3 to 10, we get back a single con cell. The con cell has a, an actual value in the car position. In the critter position, we have this promise object. And so the only thing that's been done is we've, um, we, we haven't actually done this recursion yet. We have not recursively called ourselves. We've made a, just a, just a sec, that. we've made a, um, there's a, a closure around the, this, um, this environment, the environment that exists for that stream EI to be invoked. So start and end are bound to concrete values. Start is bound to 3, end is bound to 10. And then we wrap that thing up and made a promise to do it later. And that promise object is what put, got put in the cutter position. No, I didn't call. No, I called in your in your racket. You didn't say. <sighs> yes, I made a promise to make the number ten. <laughs> okay. Huh. So I mean, it looks like because it gives this like line number of where things are happening. So this is where the promise was made. That's what what it's showing us. Um, okay. All right. 
Let's give that, like, so those streams were both created and then they, like, got garbage collected. Let's give it a name so that we can um, play with it. All right, so now foo is that same object. Just give me a little more room here. Um, okay, so now what happens if we call, yes, Brian? Yeah. Can you just, if you put a whole stream into Morse, does it give a list? Or does We're just about to do this. So now let's let's look for stream. So stream car of foo is the three. I mean, we're looking right at it. There's the three. So now let's do stream cutter. So that forces. So. Okay, so the cutter of this is effectively a new bit of the stream. So stream cutter of foo forced that stream EI to be evaluated. So um, so start was three. So it, it so it stream EI got applied to four and ten, and then we could see it there it is. So it made a new con stream, which is really just a cons with four and a new promise. So, um, so it's the next piece of the stream. Um, yeah, Jack. Yes, exactly. That's exactly what I was going to do. Next is say, right, so now if we go back and look at what foo is, we can see that the promise has, the original promise has been forced. It produced a two and a new promise. Um, there's a thing that we're, we're, I'm not going to. I'm going to explain on uh, probably tomorrow called memoization, which is a real word to, memor to uh, memorize. But is that the um, the the forcing when when you force the promise, it um, it automatically creates space to save the value that was produced. So now the stream has got um, the the. Force promise. So we, we, if we go back and get the second item again, it doesn't have to redo the calculation. That result has been memoized. Yep, Jessica. Just out of curiosity, so in the beginning when you were using constraint yeah. instead, so if you force that one, then would you get 10 instead of 4? When I was using the wrong version of stream, I was using the underlying implementation, which should behave the same way. Oh. It, it, so we just weren't able to inspect it, and I didn't have the right primitives to unpack it either. But it should behave as the same way as this one, which is more visible. I saw a hand somewhere else. OK, so at this point, we've only generated two items in the list. Um, if we go through and display stream on this, then actually let's look at display stream. Okay, display stream does display for uh, it, it, it does a for each, which will effectively. I thought that would be a little bit more um, with less abstraction. I, act, I don't want to look at stream for each at the moment. But display stream walks through and displays all of them. So it walks through all of them. And now if we look at foo, all the promises have been forced. And we can see all of the items have been generated. Um, OK. So let's look at, um, let's look at stream map. I want to show you guys how that's implemented. Oh, there's also a stream um, null function, which is equivalent to the, the list null. Um, this is has a parallel um, structure as our stream enumerate interval. In that, it only, at each time it's called, it only does one concrete mapping. So if the stream's null, then we're done. Otherwise, we build up a new piece of, a, like a new stream, where we take our mapping procedure, apply it to the car of the input stream. So that actually does a, comp a computation. 
And then we recursively call ourselves uh, to deal with the rest later. So stream map only does one little piece of work itself. So let me show that in action. So we still have our foo object. It's, it's been forced, but OK, it's, it's a stream. If we do define bar to be stream map, and we'll hand it the squaring operator onto foo. All right, now look, let's look at bar. How many items will bar have? How many items will, will exist in bar? Remember, foo is like all the way force, in case that matters. So only one. Wait a minute. Why is that a nine? Oh, because the first item of foo is a three. Yeah. Um, so it, it, it did the code that we're looking at on the top of the screen. Um, let me just pull it down a little so we see the whole procedure. Um, it, took, it took foo. It, foo's not null. Um, so it got the car of foo, which is a three, the stream car. It applied the mapping procedure. And then it wrapped the rest of it with a promise to do more. So all of these operations are delayed until somebody wants them, until we actually walk down the stream and ask for them. Um, so, well, that's pretty much the, the intro. Can people think of some examples of where, like, pending operations exist in your computing lives? Where, where does this concept exist in, like, environments that you've seen and played with? Yeah. Yeah, go ahead, say. Hold on, you guys. Go ahead, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Where have you seen the idea of like delayed evaluation? Okay, wait, I'm gonna give you the microphone for this. Yeah, go ahead, sorry. Uh, when we're making an AJAX request, um, yep. it, it waits until the whole program is run to make the actual request and get the data. So is it like um, the computation gets handed off and then you wait until it comes back? Um, yeah, so that doesn't delay the whole program. So everything else runs in line, and yeah. the AJAX request goes off somewhere else to make the request. Is it like an interrupt? Like when it does come back, then what happens? Um, then you can evaluate and use the data. Okay, yeah. so it's like there's one pending operation. Yeah, they call it a promise, too. Oh, uh huh. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right, yeah. I saw it in the back. Yeah. Haskell is an infinite list. Yes, right. Haskell, Haskell is lazy by nature. Everything is lazy unless it, yeah. So without even realizing it, you were writing lazy code in Haskell. Yeah, we didn't even um, talk about that. But yes, Haskell is lazy. So another hand. Yeah, Brian up front. Okay, hold on. Diagonal is hard. The mic, the mic passing. Yeah, Brian. Uh, forward definitions and uh, like C, C plus plus. What is that? Or I forget what they're called, but when you do a define for a, uh, a function up front, but then you actually define it later. Hmm. So you create. Okay, forward definition. Okay, thank you. Um, the thing I was thinking of was um, like YouTube video loading. So you've got like one piece of the story which is playing the video, and then in the background there's a thing that's loading the data to be played. That you can model is a lazy operation, um, and you can imagine if you want to conserve bandwidth. Like I don't know if YouTube actually works this way, but. Um, you might not want to load the entire video if the person has hit pause, right? Because they might not ever watch it. So particularly if you're on mobile or if you're in any sort of resource-constrained thing, you want it to be consumed before more of it is requested. Yeah. Yeah. So now it might not be that YouTube has this underlying lazy model, 
But if you do have this lazy model, you get all this for free without having to specifically architect it. So that's sort of the value of these abstractions. So we'll, we'll continue playing with this on my side. Yeah. This one shouldn't be five, and that one shouldn't be one. So, um, well, okay, one thing you're missing is this one yours? Yeah, yeah that's already bringing up the five. Um, you're missing a definition of the body. Um, you definitely have to get more points. You have to take a picture of this instead of Okay, thank you. And don't take a picture of this instead of two. I want to ask you a question. This one I thought Gerald was, and I do correct. Look at the answers. Yeah, the answer you say a method, but that no. But there's something else wrong with it. Look at no, the, the only no. I check everything is correct. No, it isn't. I'm sorry. Look at the answers and come back. Look at the answers. Oh, this one I'm doing it right, but I don't want to know because the DA is really bad. Like, it's supposed to be that I like, pass the class as a whole list, and then it still passes through X variable, and then... Wait, so what's wrong with this one? It's not supposed to have this. I don't know why he added it. Mm -hmm. it is not. Yeah, this is supposed to have this. Well, okay. Take a picture of the test. Yeah. Say I didn't put four. I see a four. I guess he thought it was an exclamation mark. Say so picture that. Same. Okay. And this, I don't think it's wrong. Yeah, no, it is because I said to use procedural distraction. We systematically took a point of four. That's okay. what that means. Right. You're supposed to figure that out. I thought it was like, I, I didn't say it back product, so I didn't do it. I, I know, but you knew you should have known it existed. That's why I was testing. Um, I have two other finals on the day of uh, this one. Is it possible to take this one at a different time? Yeah. I sent an email about this. Oh, I'll, I'll let's go read that then. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, at this point, doesn't it have to be a variable? Because if, if they're both numbers, they can add it. No, it's a complete expression. Uh, uh, well, this is why I heard you talking to Lens too, so I, I, there are part of me that you want to use. That's what this, this was, I didn't want to hand it to your lab, but the idea was this is something that was building a whole course, you should use procedural extraction, you should remember to make product yeah. existent. It says, I thought this was the only part of the code that you were giving me. I know. I'll go. So I guess I really can't. Um, what else? This, this one. Oh, yeah, I understand that. I don't know what I'm saying. So this one I already said about the difference. Look at the answer key, because there's a whole rubric for how this was scored. Okay. So look at the answer key. If there's something that we did wrong, that was good. Okay? Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, let me, let me clean up my computer. So after I move out. Do you have a uh, bazaar today? No. When your I tried looking at your website and I was no. not able to. You have to send me an email and I'll send you a, a Google spreadsheet and you can sign up.